so far in Flash is very limited. Therefore, I don't expect some magnum opus. I just expect some animation that just shows that you know the very basics of how to get in the Flash and animate something. All right. Um, we'll talk about some things today um, that sort of take and extend the stuff that we went over last time. All right. So my hope is after we leave today, you have a pretty good idea. It, you know what what would be a reasonable thing to do, the, the kinds of things that, that, that you can do, and some of the things will sort of be repetition of, of, of what we covered uh, last time, and then we'll, we'll add on to them and, 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 and so forth. Um, I have, you have quite a few people ask me questions. When is it due? Is just due sometime today. So it's not due like during lab or anything like that. Just sometime today you can upload to the Dropbox. How can you get it to me? You can get it to me any way that you can get it to me. So you can hand me paper, you can scan it and upload it to the Dropbox, you can do anything you want. However, you do need to have an entry in the Dropbox. So if you hand me a sheet of paper with some hand sketches on it, put an entry in the Dropbox that says I handed you a sheet of paper with drawings on it. Okay, so there has to be an entry in the Dropbox, whether or not you upload it or not. So, uh, uh, again, you know, um, scan it, take a picture of it. It doesn't really matter as long as I can, I can see what's going on here. All right. Um, we're going to do today, similar to what we did last time, except um, we do have Flash in here, so I'll do some of these things in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, sort of repeat and extend and go off in a few dire other directions, but sort of fitting around the same thing with just some very basic animation. First thing to realize is you don't have to use tweens to do animation. You can, if you want to, draw every individual frame. All right. Um, it's just that with the tweens, if you're doing something that is regular, like a ball bouncing, a car going down the street, anything like that, your life is going to be a lot easier by doing the tweens. But let's say I wanted to animate something like a jumping jack, a stick figure doing a jumping jack. Do keep in mind that for purposes of this class, a lot of times the drawings I make will be very simple or, or, or I will import drawings or whatever. But let's say I wanted to make a make a animation of someone doing jumping jacks, a stick figure. I can go in here and start up Flash. And I can just do like animators did in the old way, in the old days, and just animate each frame individually. Draw each frame uh, individually, that is. When we do that, we'll notice that there's two different kinds of frames on our timeline. There are just plain old frames, and there are what are called key frames. A key frame is a frame that we are going to animate ourselves, that we are going to draw ourselves. All right, so create new. At this point, that doesn't matter, but I'll pick action script. And if I wanted to draw a stick figure doing jumping jacks, I could go and use the paintbrush. Oops. Draw my stick figure in frame one. Always use the undo. The undo is your friend. I could do, uh, do it like that. If I wanted to, I could erase it. And let's see. Let's just. And then I could go here on my timeline and right mouse and say, insert keyframe. Again, the difference between a frame and a keyframe is a frame simply 
repeats what was in the previous frame. All right. So a, a, a frame is just a, a um, I don't want to put it, a, a, um, a placeholder in your um, animation. For example, if I put this keyframe right next to the other keyframe, he's going to be doing the jumping jacks real quick. He probably will be doing them pretty quick anyhow. So what I'm going to do, if I want to leave a couple of space, well, yeah, I'll, leave, I'll put a couple of just plain old frames in there, insert frame, and then here I'll insert a keyframe. And I could have inserted a keyframe or a blank keyframe. I'm going to go and undo that because I want to actually insert a blank keyframe. And then I can draw the second position of the jumping jacks. Notice how it sort of smooths out the drawing for you. And as we go back and forth, you'll see the person's doing the jumping jacks. We can go here and test this movie. We're doing it. We're all doing it pretty quick anyhow. All right. How could we make this look better? Well, we could put some intermediary frames in here. For example, we could go here and want to just the plain old frames and say convert to keyframe. All right. And then we could go and maybe just change it a little bit. Use the eraser tool to erase this. And then maybe draw in some sort of midpoint in the jumping jack. make them go slower? There's actually a couple ways I could make them go slower. There was one way I could make them go slower. Yes? Right. Put, put extra frames in there. All right. The other thing I could do is I could go on the stage and change the frames per second. Right now it is set for 24 frames per second. I could go and change that maybe to six frames per second. And if I go and run this, all right, now it looks maybe a little better. Now, I did this all on one layer, drawing it all in one layer. How could maybe I've done a better job by using two layers? Put a background in. Yeah, like I could put a background of a gym in or something like that and it would be doing the jumping jacks there. But, well, uh, forgetting about the background, though, what if I just wanted to animate the stick figure? Yes? Put just the head and the body yeah. on one and then the arms on Yeah, put the head and the body on one and then make the arms in another one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and clear all these out. Insert a keyframe. Remember, a keyframe is a frame that you are going to do something on. You're going to draw on one way or another. All right. And uh, if you don't, the opposite of, a, or, or the other kind of frame other than a keyframe is just a regular frame, and that will stay the way it was um, throughout the whole uh, whole thing until the next keyframe. So I could draw the head and body. I could go out maybe to here and say insert <coughs> frame. I could then insert a layer and Draw that, go there, say, and convert to keyframe, could then remove this, and 
draw. Go up to here. Insert keyframe. And all I'm drawing by hand then is the, the incremental change, the difference between one frame and another. And again, I'm not taking tons of time doing this, but you should be able to see how even making this little bit of effort, it's going to make for a better jumping jack. about that. So what I did is, is I went in and I draw, uh, drew um, the thing that doesn't change and uh, then the thing that does change. Don't be stingy with layers. Alright? Because that layers, again, uh, allow you to focus on just one piece of it at a time and build it up. Anything that you're going to animate should be on a layer. Okay? So, um, in the case of the person jumping jacks, we saw two approaches. One to do that with one layer where the whole body moved, another to just um, have a background layer for the part that stayed the same and then have another layer for the uh, arms and legs. Yes? Um, you didn't convert that to a symbol, did you? I did not convert that to a symbol because I'm just, I didn't want to do a tween, right? Uh, tween. Yeah. I didn't want to do a tween. You need a tween so that Flash can recognize that this car on page one, or frame one, is the same car as on frame ten. Otherwise, it's just strokes. It's just drawings. It's just stuff on the, on the stage. That there's no way to associate that together. You, you know what I mean? So you convert to a symbol if you want the computer to generate the, the frames in between. If you're drawing each frame, then you just draw each frame, right? And you're doing like the old animators did, where they would just draw... And, or like in a flip book, where each picture is just a little bit different than, than the next one. Yes? So if you could do, if you converted the arms and legs to symbols in this one, could you tweak them? I mean, with what you have so far, or would you have to redo it? Um, that is a good question. Um, my guess would be, my guess is that probably wouldn't work very well. All right? Um, because you really, you don't want the arm to move up and down like this. You want it to move like that. Um, you could probably do something. Yeah, uh, you might have to put each limb on its own layer then. Because you're going to animate each limb. Although maybe not. I don't know. You have to play with that. I haven't thought that one through. We did talk about lab last time. And I apologize uh, for how it was set up uh, last time um, with it not being in here. Sort of made it a little crazy to do the presentation, and I was just sort of, as the, the lab progressed, I was sort of just shouting stuff out that I, as I thought of it. Um, but for the benefit of people maybe that weren't in lab last time, one thing you can do is you can bring pictures in, all right? You can bring pictures from an outside source. That means, uh, the good news about that is you can, uh, again, use any tool you want to to create the image, and then go in and, and manipulate it. All right, and, and add it to the animation. So, for example, I'm going to close out of this. Oops. I'm going to go online and look for um, a clip art of, like, uh, an automobile. And a photo of a desert, let's say.
depends on what kind of car we want to have. Let's have this one. And I'll go and I'll put it on the desktop. And I will grab the URL here so I can cite it for where I had it from. I'll just put it for now in a little text document. search and I'm going to search for Creative Commons and I'm going to find content that I can I can build upon because I want to add this to an animation. Alright, I like this one. sizes. The medium one is probably big enough. I will download this and save it to my desktop. And I will also grab the URL, URL of this. All right. Now in this case, just in the interest of time, I am um, using stuff that people have already built. But certainly, you could go into any drawing program that you have, or take digital pictures or whatever, and add these sort of things to it. All right. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go in, I'm going to create an ActionScript3 uh, Flash application, and I will go into, um, let's see, import. And I'm going to import to the stage, which means, you know, what is the stage? The stage is this here. So <coughs> I'm going to first import the image for the um, background. So I will go here and file, import to stage, and I'll pick the image that I want to bring in. Notice, these are any symbols that we have defined, 
or anything that we brought in. So we brought in a symbol, or I'm sorry, we brought in a JPEG and a GIF. So I'm going to go and I'm going to bring that guy over and put it on my background. All right. Now, I know what you're saying. There's a white background. We'll take care of that one. All right. We'll take care of that in, in, in a few minutes. I thought that, I thought that would be transparent, but anyhow. We'll see how to do it, and then, then we'll talk about how to, how to uh, uh, make uh, the background be transparent. All right, so now I want to go convert this into a symbol, and I can call it car. And now I have a symbol for a car, and I can do my motion tween. So I can right mouse here, and I can say create motion tween, and I can go in this frame and move it up to here. And then the background, again, I have to make sure that there's an equal number of frames, otherwise the background disappears after the first frame. A lot of you had this question on, uh, last week. So I'm going to go here and say, whoops, go here and say, insert frame. And as we do this, we see the car, as we run this, driving towards us. Now, what's wrong with that? Well, a couple things are wrong with that. A couple things I want to change. Number one is a, a car that was, this doesn't really look like a car driving towards us, right? Um, it, it, it just looks like a, an image sliding over top another image, all right? And there's two reasons for that. The first reason is because the, uh, the background isn't transparent, all right? There's a white background, and therefore the whole thing moves. The other reason is that a car that was moving towards us would be looking like it was getting bigger. So we can take care of one of those things in Flash, and we can take care of the other thing through photo editing. All right? I'm going to go here into the keyframe, the first keyframe, and I'm going to pick that, and I'm going to give it a different size. Right now, this is... Uh, 200 by 160, 200 pixels wide, 160 pixels tall. I could make this go from 20 through to 16. And now, if we go and do it, whoops, got to go in the last one. Yeah, this one I, I still want to be. Two hundred by one sixty. So now when I go and test this. A little bit more of the illusion because now it looks like it's coming towards us. Pretty fast in fact. Now, the other issue as far as the, um, as far as the transparency goes, I'm going to show you real quick how to make it transparent. Um, we will have a whole unit on photo editing, so if you don't get this, don't sweat it too much, but this is a fairly common thing that, that people want to do uh, with, with uh, especially like these clip art sort of images, is to make the background um, uh, transparent. So I'm going to go in. I am going to edit this with an open source package called the GIMP. And many of you have probably heard of Photoshop. The GIMP is an open source uh, application. We'll discuss in more detail what that means to be an open source application. The upshoot for most people is that it's free compared to Photoshop, which is expensive. All right. So, for example, for the stuff I use, for the stuff I use photo editing for, I typically use the GIMP. Because again, you know, I, I can't afford to buy Photoshop, you know. <laughs> or at the very least, I'm not going to spend the money for Photoshop when I can get a professional quality, comparable product for free. So, I'm going into the GIMP, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the white be transparent instead of being white. And that will give more of an illusion of, um, of, of actual. 
actually uh, the car moving towards us. There's a website that's got like a flash application that has a lot of the same features as Photoshop and it's working to do that. Repeat that please. There's a website that's got a flash application that has a lot of the same Oh, okay. Features as I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of editing tools. Uh, again, in this class, I'm really not terribly interested in which uh, editing tool that you use. You could use a GIMP if you want, or if you have Photoshop, you can use that. Or if you want to use Photoshop in the lab, you're welcome to do that too. All right. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to click Layer, Transparency. I'm going to click Add Alpha Channel. I'm then going to go and say select by color and click on the white. I'm then going to go and say clear. So now I've gotten rid of the white going around it and where you see that sort of gray checkerboard, that's actually transparent. Now I'm going to go and save this. notice even the icon now looks a little different. And I can go and re-import that. Let me get rid of this symbol. Let me get rid of that layer all together. I will go into insert a layer. I can go up again, I can, can hide that layer if I want the background, and I can say File, Import, to Stage, and I can import the image again, and I can replace it. And now if we notice, now it looks, the car looks like a car sitting on top of the back. And I can go back and do the same thing. I can right mouse and say create motion tween. And it tells me I have to convert to a symbol. Good point. Usually what I do is I use the select tool to select everything I want to be a symbol. And then I go and convert to symbol. Call it car 2. Now I can go and make a motion tween. I can go in and do the same thing in this frame, make the size smaller, remember, notice, uh, again, this is what burns me all the time, that's why I give you the advice, notice what I'm actually editing is I'm editing the motion tween, I want to make sure I have selected the car, and then I can go in and change the size of it. 